Hello and welcome back to Charreads, or as I like to call it, Charreads. Recently, this channel hit 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> and I thought that would be a good opportunity to do something a little bit different. So I posted on the YouTube community tab um, asking for some questions and you're provided. So let's do it. 10K Q&A. Question one, has your reading changed over the years? If yes, how? And I would say certainly my reading has changed over the years. I think broadly it's just about having a lot less pressure, putting a lot less pressure on myself. Um, I think firstly being like a book person, I always felt the need to have read all of the classics. Like the Guardian has a list of 100 books to read before you die. Um, and I remember <laughs> seeing that when I first got into reading and being like, okay, let's get going. And although I still do intend to read a lot of those classics that I haven't yet, uh, I don't feel like guilty for not having or um, like any pressure to do a certain amount by a certain time. And on the flip side of things, being a booktuber and even someone that like at work is known as the bookish person, I feel like there's an expectation that I've read all popular contemporary novels, uh, which I definitely haven't. I think more than ever, I just don't give a shit. I'm very forgiving of myself for not enjoying something and putting it down or for like having weeks where I don't do any reading at all um, or for like getting into one particular genre or whatever and only reading that like I just <laughs> don't have any expectations on myself anymore which is very freeing. Which book or writer has changed your perspective on your life or an issue the most? And there is an immediate answer I have for this which is The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. I love this book but more than just the information that it gave me. I think it was the first self-help-y type book um, to influence me in a way that made me realise that I could properly change from reading books <laughs> about stuff. That may seem obvious, but I think uh, since reading this, um, I just felt, I haven't ever felt like blocked on anything. If I feel like I've got an issue, um, in my life or at work or a blind spot or whatever I'm now just like I can learn and I can change and that's amazing and that isn't necessarily like reading non-fiction books maybe that's um talking to people or going to therapy or like any manner of things this was the first book that taught me that I could change for the better and that you can overcome anything if you have the right thinking what sort of place or meaning does your youtube channel have in your life interesting question because i think a lot of youtubers i used to know a lot of like be in the london youtube scene and it was very much um like a vocation for for a lot of people it was like this is my my side hustle that i'm gonna make become my main thing and that's gonna be my life i'm gonna be an influencer and i think this channel from the start has very explicitly not been that like i've never tried to make money from it or whatever so i don't have any of those expectations which means that it's just a very nice little space i've carved out i'm really proud of it because my my initial impetus for for, for starting it was wanting to learn more from the things i'm reading and also sort of preserve those thoughts for posterity. I'm like a fish otherwise I can watch a movie or read a book and then just like not remember the main characters a week later. So even just as a memory device <laughs> YouTube has been really useful and I love having a thing that is so like undeniably a thing I have made which has some good qualities. <laughs> That's such a low bar um, but you know when you're, you're feeling down and you're like what do I even do? What's the like ugh, have I even even done anything and I can look at you know years and years of me talking about books and being like a I've had complex thoughts that's cool um, and and be like the responses from just comments or likes or whatever I love my fans um no but it's just nice to to feel like you you have an impact and that's one of the reasons that I've always made always tried to make actual videos about books, about specific books. I think they have a lot more longevity and can be a lot more practically useful to people than like a book haul or a tag video, which is fun to make and fun to watch, but um, doesn't really provide much educational value. Has anyone ever said something or had an opinion that has ruined or taken some of the enjoyment from a book you previously loved? I've got an easy answer for this. 
all of Brett Easton Ellis. You probably know Brett Easton Ellis from writing American Psycho, um, but he wrote Less Than Zero and Glamorama and Rules of Attraction. He's one of the few authors that I really um, connected to before I became someone that like read a significant amount. I loved how glamorous they were and so self-obsessed, I guess. Very solipsistic, hedonistic characters in a way that was I really was really drawn to in my late teens. But oh god, Brace Nurse is a huge asshole. <laughs> he's misogynist, he's racist, um, and now when I think about his work, I just think of how it's so like white and capitalist. I think it served me at the time, but I know that I would really hate, <laughs> probably not like it much now. And even if I did like it, it would be twinged with, with that guilt of, um, I know it's appealing to something in me that I don't even like. So um, yeah, him. A couple of people asked who or where are your go-tos for book recommendations? Um, and I would love to be able to just like give you a list of cool YouTubers who are doing really quirky stuff. Um, but I'm actually so out of the loop. I don't know how I get recommended books. I don't watch a lot of booktube anymore. Um, I mean, I follow quite a few people on Goodreads and I see stuff there. Um, I honestly think it's just, just one of those zeitgeisty, I just hear if I've heard of a book four times, I'll look it up and if it seems intriguing, I'll go for it. I don't actually have any good advice on this. Basically every day I walk past a very nice bookshop. If something is in the window there for more than two weeks, I will end up looking it up because I really trust them. Um, so that's how I get some recommendations. But yeah, don't have any go to, sorry. Do you like rereading favorite books? I relish rereading books. Um, but I don't actually do it that often. I think it's nice to have a balance. Maybe like every fifth book I would be a reread. That seems like a nice way to go about it. And I'm very conscious that having time between rereading a, a book can give you just a different, fresh perspective on it. What I'll often do if I want to reread something is um, see if there's a good audiobook version because it feels like it's taking up less of my new book time. Are there books that you hesitate to read because they intimidate you or because you don't like what you know about the author? Um, yeah, <laughs> when I read that question, for some reason my mind went Jordan Peterson and Ayn Rand. <laughs> I'm quite easily seduced by contrarian ideas, even if they go against my normal moral code. Um, I think I, I, I am very easily duped, basically. I can be super absorbed uh, by other people's ways of thinking, um, which is dangerous, is genuinely dangerous. I don't have issues with being like taken in by scams or conspiracy theories. I'm pretty grounded in the real world. Um, but when you're thinking about like politics, social issues, um, I, f I can, I can, empathize too much with the wrong side in a way that is confusing for me. So yeah, just don't read anything critical, I guess. Is that a terrible way to go about the world? I don't know. I trust John Green when he says, never read Ayn Rand. So I'm just gonna go with that. When and where do you read? I read on the sofa or in my bed. Um, and I used to read pretty consistently in the mornings, like before, would wake up like an hour before we needed to and just spend an hour reading in bed basically every day, uh, which is how I read so much. Now I have a little dog, it's very annoying. <laughs> so that's definitely why I've, my reading has taken a dive over the last couple months. Um, I do more of my reading just on the weekends. But yeah, I'd love to fit more reading in, in the morning despite having a little pooch. The first time you decide to start waking up earlier, it just feels like this amazing free time that you've reclaimed and I love that feeling. Do you ever read in any language other than English? <laughs> I wish I could say yes to this. Um, occasionally I try and read something in French, but I'm just not, I'm just not good enough. Actually, to be honest, I have Harry Potter in Latin and French, just the first book. And because I know the source material really well, it's actually quite easy to read in a different language. Um, but yeah, no, uncultured swine. One day I'll properly take up another language, but too many other hobbies. Do you have a place you want to go to just because you read it in a book? What a great question. I can't think of any like contemporary settings. I think there are quite a few historical um, locations in books that 
just sound really interesting to be there during that time. Paris and any time in history I find really alluring. In Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, which you can't quite see, it starts off in Busan in South Korea. Um, and also goes to Japan. Actually, I guess I've read quite a few books based in Japan and I don't want to go to like Tokyo just because I've read books based there. It definitely pulls places like South Korea and, and Japan up my list when I read them in literature. And then like obviously Rivendell, Hogwarts. Just before I started filming this video, I asked my boyfriend that question because I was really surprised I didn't have a good answer for it. Um, and he was like immediately, Lahore, Pakistan, um, from The Reluctant Fundamentalist by Mohsin Hamid, which is one of his favourite books. Um, so I'd love to hear your answers to that question. Where, where would you, where do you want to go because you read it in a book? Final question, do you have any nature themed recommendations? <laughs> yeah, I do. Nature is one of those, nature and memoir are like the only two categories of books that I'd want to do, like my top five, whatever. Um, so let's cover some of them. Uh, firstly, A Buzz in the Meadow by Dave Goulson talks about bugs a lot and the decline of the bumblebee and I loved it. This is non-fiction by the way. Um, we also have Feral by George Mumwa, um, which is about rewilding um, in the UK. It made me feel very connected to my country and I like that. Two memoirs that go hand in hand that I both love Wild by Cheryl Strayed, like one of my favourite books ever. This is where Cheryl Strayed um, hikes the Pacific Crest Trail, which is like 1200 miles on the west coast of the US. Um, you know, while she's dealing with grief, but is also her immersing herself in nature and resetting. Um, and then The Salt Path by Raina Wynn, uh, which is a similar situation. Um, her and her husband have been made homeless. They're hiking around the southwest coastal path in the UK. Um, and wild camping along the way. This is such a lovely book. I spend a bunch of time in Cornwall, a uh, lot of my family lives there, and just reading this, I could just feel that, that feeling of standing on the coastal path, looking at sea and just the wind coming at you and the smell of the salt and the, the howl of the gulls and oh love it also i literally just started this today finally i've had it on my shelves for like two years um i'm 20 pages in to the overstory by richard powers and i'm already deeply in love with it so it's a book about trees that's that's all i've got for you and there we have it lots of questions lots of answers um, thank you so much for watching and for following along, whether you've been a subscriber for a long time or whether you looked up Kafka on the shore the other day and clicked on the top video review and got really annoyed at me talking about incest and decided to subscribe anyway. Genuinely, so many people watch that video and like loads of people subscribe from that video. So if that's you, let me know. Speaking of non-book videos about books and, and YouTube and stuff. I wanted to make this video for ages about making individual book review videos versus like the traditional format of a booktube. I guess it's not traditional, like the, the, the <laughs> common contemporary format of a booktube channel within the frame of this book, um, Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday, the writer of The Obstacles the Way. Um, haven't got around to it. Is that something you'd be interested in? Because it's actually really interesting. If I was someone who was keen to accrue a, a large following. Firstly, I'd probably put more effort into editing these videos and maybe add some music in, who knows. Um, but uh, the SEO implications of doing YouTube the way I do it versus the way most booktubers do it are really interesting. So anyway, let me know if you'd like to hear about that and I'll make it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another one soon. Bye.